Hello church, good to see you today. Jesus says this about love in John chapter 15 verse 12. This is my commandment, love each other in the same way as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, this is what love looks like. And this is what we need to shoot for here as a church. And when we love each other in this way, and we love our neighbors in this way, we can impact a city. and We can impact Southern Alberta. But when we don't love, we cannot impact a divided city in which we are divided by our hostilities. And so what does love look like? Well, love specifically looks like a few things here, and I have to admit, this is from one of my pastoral buddies in Red Deer. We must move from hostility to hospitality, embracing those people around us, irrespective of their beliefs and if they agree with us or not about masks, vaccinations, and what you think of the government. We need to be more passionate about the true gospel, and who Jesus is than these other things and what Jesus calls us to do. This is what love looks like. We must move from criticism to honoring, particularly our leaders. We need to be praying for our leaders, respecting them, and speaking good of them whenever we can. This is the consistent call of the New Testament. This is what love looks like, and this will draw us together. We must move from victimhood to servanthood. We must seek to serve others and walk in a way that's consistent with our Savior as he came to serve and not to be served. We ask what we can do, not what can be and should be done for us. We put others first. This is what love looks like. We need to be love. And for us as a church, Love looks like consistency. We want to honor God by honoring those God has placed in authority over us. We want to be thankful to AHS for what they're trying to do to take care of those who are sick. And when they set out guidelines that they say are to help others, we respect what they are trying to do. And we are grateful. One of my friends, a pastor up in Calgary, young guy, was diagnosed with COVID along with the rest of his family. The rest of his family was fine for the most part, but for some reason, he ended up in the hospital with breathing difficulties and he is continuing to fight even today. This is what love looks like. We are trying to help those who are sick and those who are our healthcare workers helping those who are sick. And so for the next three weeks, in accordance with what AHS has asked us, we are going online. Our small groups and our support groups that are meeting at the church will continue to do that. I encourage you to continue to connect and meet with your bridge builders, your small group, whatever connections you're in. And if you would like to get connected in some way through our church here, please let us know. Email us at the church here at this link and we would love to connect you. 1 Corinthians 13 says this, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. It keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love and the greatest of these is love. Let love be your highest goal. Let all things work together in unity because of love. And let's be a church together that is marked by unity and love. Now let's hear from our friend Joel about being a blessing and how we can love our neighbors through serving our neighbors. So Joel, what are some of the ways that you are serving those that God has placed in your community, in your sphere of influence? Yeah, well, in my community, it's, my community is pretty easy uh, because I'm surrounded by a lot of seniors. Uh, Shelby and I live around a lot of seniors, so just like as we meet them, it's pretty easy to like 
shovel their walk every time it snows. And uh, my one neighbor, Bill, we met him on a walk and I've been going over every time he needs something lifted. He's, uh, uh, I've hung some shelves for him. I've did some electrical work for him. Uh, yeah, so that side is pretty easy for us, for me, yeah. So what is one of the simplest or smallest ways that you served somebody and how did they respond to that? Yeah, this is uh, one of the coolest responses I've ever seen to just like a really simple thing is uh, when I was working as an electrician, I went to this house, this immigrant family's house and they, uh, they were from Korea, the mom didn't speak English, the son was going to school here, so he was kind of translating, and he just kind of told us what needed to be fixed. Uh, he told me. So I go in and I fix these plugs really easy. I was probably done in 10 minutes. And then uh, they were like, oh, I'm so sorry, like you had to come and fix this, I'm so sorry. Like I'm like, no, 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 it's like, it's literally my job, like I'm here. Uh, and I'm like, is there anything else broken? Anything else I need to look at while I'm here? Um, and they were like, oh no, no, like there's one thing, but you don't have to go look at it. And I'm like, no, like honestly, I wanna like, like tell me what it is, I'll go and look at it. And they were just like so thankful that I would just, it like blew their mind that I was there to just, I'm like, it's my job, but still I was there. And uh, they like made me this breakfast. It was like they had moved to Canada and didn't know our food. So they were like walking around the grocery store and just like seeing things that other people uh, we're getting off the shelves. So they gave me this breakfast of like bologna, onions, jam, and peanut butter. It, was, it wasn't great, but they were just like so thankful and like were expressing such gratitude that I would like ask them what else needed to be fixed. And so yeah, just that posture of, it was so simple for me, but they were just like unbelievably grateful. And just shows the importance of listening to people yeah. and being able to serve them in the way that they're looking for. Yeah, totally. And so, yeah. But nobody wants to feel like a project. And so how do you recommend serving people without making them feel like they are the means to an end? Yeah, yeah, no one wants to feel like a project. So I think the biggest thing you do is don't think of them as a project. Like don't make yourself uh, out to be something or someone that they need. Like. We all need help at different times. We all need serving at different times. Like that's how we're gonna move forward. So I think the biggest thing is just don't think of them in that way.